Hello guys and welcome back to Run the Atlas. We just got back from a weekend in Yellowstone National Park. This is the first national park in the United States established in 1872. It's one of the coolest places I've ever been to. The landscapes are unparalleled. I highly recommend visiting. So today I wanted to talk about the things you need to know before visiting Yellowstone National Park. Number one, we went in July and the temperatures vary extremely between night and day. At night, even in summer, you wanna bring a jacket and winter type clothing because it'll drop down to about 40 degrees or so. During the day, it can be in the 80s, so it's vastly different, bring lots of layers. Number two, the speed limits also change from day to night. So during the day, you'll see one speed limit posted, usually 45, and at night, it drops down to 35. And that's because of the moose. Believe it or not, we found this out the hard way. We got pulled over and the cop gave us a warning, letting us know that at nighttime, we need to slow down because there are moose. Speaking of animals, stay far away from them. You will see many animals during your trip. It's incredible. They appear very tame, especially when you see them from the car. They're eating grass, enjoying themselves, roaming the meadows, roaming the fields, but they are wild animals. So stay far away from the bison, the bears, the elk, and you will be good to go. Number four is hotels. We went on a holiday weekend. We went during 4th of July. Just to give you an idea, the motels during this time period were close to $200 a night. We ended up staying at a hostel, which ran us about $100 a night. I would say it was a step up from sleeping in your car. We had running water, there was a bed. It was reasonably quiet, but just know that accommodations will run you a lot of money here. Next is the park is vast. It takes about three to four hours to drive the entire distance of the park north to south. And believe me, you'll want to see this park and take your time. It is incredible. There's so many sights to see. Next up, it's very well marked. A lot of people were asking me, is it easy to travel around the park? What's it like? It's very well paved. It's very well marked. You will see many signs for the different attractions. Which brings me to my next point, is there is no internet in the park, except for at the main junctions and some of the hotels and lodges within the park. There is no internet along this route. Having no internet service is a blessing, but also can be really challenging because you wanna stick with your group, make sure you know where to go or have a meetup place when or if you get lost, bring a paper map with you. They will give this to you as you enter the park. Speaking of preparation, you wanna bring enough food and water into the park. While there are plenty of places to eat within the park, they kind of come at random and you don't really know when the next place will be to eat or to use the rest stop. So if you see a rest stop, if you see a gas station, use it, bring lots of water and snacks and preferably a packed lunch into the park. Now, if you're short on time during your trip, you wanna see the Geyser Old Faithful and Prismatic Lake first. They're kind of close together and they are extraordinary. So the Geyser, it goes off every 90 minutes and the park rangers will give you rough estimates on when the next time is for the Geyser to go off and you wanna plan for that. There's multiple locations where you can watch the geyser in action. One is from up above, which takes a little bit of time to hike to, and one is right around, there's kind of an amphitheater around the geyser, and definitely plan for that. Perhaps pack a box lunch and eat it while you're waiting, or prepare for a little hike around the area, which is extremely scenic. Next is restaurants. If you're staying in Jackson Hole, which we were, that area, the restaurants normally close around 9 p.m. There's only a few restaurants and bars that serve dinner till about 10, and you wanna prepare for that because if you're getting in late, just know that there probably won't be many restaurants open aside from the grocery store. 
getting to the national park, most likely you'll either drive in or fly in. And just to let you know, the Jackson Hole Airport is extremely beautiful. I was not prepared for how beautiful this airport is. It's a very small airport and it kind of looks like a modern lodge, but it's very architectural. It was redesigned in 2009 and also 2014, and it's really beautiful. They serve nonstop flights to 13 destinations. Now, many people were taking their RVs or vans into the park, which is a very popular thing to do. Last but not least, I wanna say is take your time in the park. We were there for literally the weekend, which is good for an overview, but you really wanna relax when you're at Yellowstone and take in the scenery and spend a few days to just unplug and observe nature. That's what these parks were built for. They are built for taking your time, taking in the scenery and enjoying the beautiful nature of the United States. And with that, I hope that you get a chance to visit Yellowstone very soon. It is absolutely worth it and it is gorgeous. You will be blown away. Next Travel Tuesday, we will have our vlog series on Yellowstone. It's gonna be a multi-part series because there was so much to see here. It was incredible. I hope you enjoy it. Be sure to subscribe, like down below, share with your friends, and see you next Travel Tuesday.